Coming up on Dialogue Weekend, leaders from China, France and Germany held a video conference on climate change this Friday. What messages are coming from the meeting? U.S. climate envoy John Kerry is visiting China to discuss joint carbon emissions. Can the trip ease tensions and push new cooperation? And this week's Newsmaker, now on Dialogue Weekend. Welcome to Dialogue Weekend. I'm Xu Qianduo. Leaders from China, France and Germany held a virtual meeting on climate change. Broad issues including China-Europe relations and anti-epidemic cooperation were also discussed. So what's the significance of this summit? Were any signals given as to how these powers might tackle climate change? And how might China-Europe relations evolve from here? To discuss these issues and more, I'm joined by Professor John Gong of Beijing's University of International Business and Economics and Joel Root, Chairman of the Bridge Tank, a member of the Task Force on Climate Change and Finance in the G20 and the T20. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. I will start with uh, Mr. Joel Root. You know, the summit, which took place on Friday, is actually a week before an earthly summit to be held by the U.S., President Joe Biden. Uh, so the timing, uh, is there any consideration or special consideration behind the timing? You know, in uh, international relations, timing is of the essence. Timing is everything. Uh, and this time, it's wonderful because you have two timings. First of all, it corresponded to the visit of John Kerry to China, and it uh, is just a few days ahead of this uh, summit convened by uh, Joe Biden next week. So I think it's utterly important for China, first of all, to show that China is engaged in discussions, even though there are tensions with the U.S., uh, and to show uh, that China is engaged in discussions with everyone, including the EU. For the EU, it's the same. The EU has been a leader with China uh, during the absentee period of the U.S. in the Paris Agreement under the Trump administration, so the timing is important. But I would want to add just one thing, is that timing is important provided uh, you manage to have a result. And I think two results which are, uh, I would say, not enough emphasized by commentators on these meetings are the two results that follow. First of all, uh, China said, uh, President Xi Jinping said that China would ratify the Kigali Amendment to the Mon Montreal Protocol, which is a mini treaty that, uh, dating 2016, that aims at phasing out the hydrofluorocarbons. We always talk in climate change about uh, CO2. The HFCs, the hydrofluorocarbons, are utterly dangerous for climate change, and China committed on that. It's a way diplomatically for the two sides, for the EU and for China, to show that they can still be leading forces of proposal, even though the US are back and want to be back. The second notable um, a, a decision or, or statement uh, concerns more particularly France uh, within the EU and France within the, the, the German-French couple on the one hand and China. President Macron and President Xi agrees, agreed to boost uh, green development efforts in Africa. This is key for the French president and in terms of geography that also shows that once while we're talking global issues, while the U.S. claim to be back to those global issues and want to regain the lead on those global issues, China and France can still have development, be leading developments in other specific but very important geographies. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. Uh, John, uh, so from Chinese perspective, uh, what do you read uh, uh, into this uh, you know, timing or coincidence like uh, with J uh, John Kerry's arrival in Shanghai and of course uh, a week before uh, another summit you have uh, Chinese leaders and the European leaders speaking to each other on climate change. Yeah, I, I totally agree that timing is very important. I think um, the significance of this meeting is that there are still uh, significant ground for uh, co policy coordination between uh, Beijing and, and Brussels, uh, especially Germany uh, and France. Reportedly, uh, this uh, conference was initiated actually by uh, Chancellor Merkel. So I think th there is a willingness on the European side 
um, to uh, uh, coordinate policy still, as well as uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to be uh, still remain in the driving seat in the climate cause. I think uh, you know, as your previous guest has said, uh, during uh, Trump's administration's absence, um, uh, it's basically uh, the European side as well as China side uh, to take the leadership in this cause. So I think that's very significant. Another thing, another thing I want to add is that uh, uh, reportedly. Uh, climate is not the only uh, topic in, uh, on the agenda between the uh, both sides' leaders. Um, reportedly, they also talked about uh, the China-European relations, and I think this is extremely important in the wake of, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, the, the rounds of uh, sanctions uh, initiated by both sides regarding this totally bogus issue, in my view, about Xinjiang. Uh, China did. Um, Impose sanctions on several uh, European Parliament members, uh, and I think um, you know the recently signed uh, bilateral investment treaty could have the risk of being jeopardized. So I think you know this is one area uh, also very important that China and the European sides are working very hard trying to prevent the relationship from further sliding uh, downwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I think uh, it's very comforting to. Uh, see that uh, you know this call being initiated by uh, Chancellor Merkel, uh, who is probably the most ardent supporters, uh, one of the ar most ardent supporters of the the CAI, the, the bilateral yeah. investment agreements between mm. yeah, right. Yes. Uh, so, Joel, you see uh, here, you know, like uh, as you said, uh, during the absence of the United States because of Trump and uh, the European Union uh, and China uh, played a very important role, the leading uh, leading role in fighting climate change. And now U.S. Uh, tries to return in, uh, in high profile uh, to a global leadership. Uh, somehow do you see there's a leadership competition? Or what kind of this coordinated approach between China and the European Union will have probably impact on the summit next week? Well, uh, yeah, it's a very key question. Uh, what will be the political, rather, and not just diplomatic, but political position of, uh, of the US in that? And I can tell you that, uh, seen from Europe, Europeans are extremely attentive to that. Uh, Europeans have been marked by the Trump years. Let me return to what you mentioned, that there has been a previous meeting between uh, John Kerry and uh, Franz Timmermans, the vice president of, of, the, of the EU Commission. In this meeting, uh, not only climate change issues were discussed, but China, namely, was mentioned by John Kerry, and John Kerry wants uh, China to be more, uh, uh, more more drastic on its uh, carbon uh, carbon emission. So, I think this was uh, very important. This was a, 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 a Euro-American meeting that talked about China. Now, the meeting we had yesterday was interesting on that account because uh, Chancellor Merkel, uh, notably, uh, again reassessed, uh, re recognized the efforts uh, of China in uh, looking for a 2060 uh, net zero uh, carbon uh, position. And the German communique after the meeting mentioned that uh, Chinese position had moved from uh, saying that the peak for emissions, that the emission, emission peak would be around 2030, to a position where now the official position is that it would be by. 2030, and they mentioned that it's 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 uh, it's an improvement, you know, it's an effort. So these efforts are recognized. Now, where we stay on the negotiations themselves is that Europeans and Americans would want would welcome China, considering that this peak of emissions is brought uh, to before 2030, maybe 2025. This might be in the future, if we have the same conversation in 2030, I'm sure the peak will not have been 2030, but before, because China has always uh, succeeded in its, uh, in its commitments in terms of climate change and has always been able to prepare them. But until we are there, politically, uh, the US want to leverage on that. Now, we think from Europe, there's a wide consensus from Europe on two points. First of all, the U.S. having been an absentee, we want to see uh, that uh, the, the commitments that will be taken in the, in the coming meetings on the 22nd of April 
will not be able to be uh, worked back by a, a next administration. Right. Europe doesn't want to see a, a back and forth uh, administration. And the second thing, uh, Europeans are very attentive on their sovereignty now, and they would want to have a, a US which is rather mild and rather soft-spoken until uh, the Glasgow agenda. So I think that on that, China and uh, the EU have a common uh, interest. Mm -hmm. uh, can you briefly also talk about uh, this um, you know, bilateral relationship between China and the European Union? Uh, you know, we know the recent setback between the two countries over Xinjiang and other issues. Uh, uh, but with this summit, uh, uh, you know, somehow help stabilize and show, showing this readiness or willingness you know, from both sides to move beyond the, uh, the frustrations, say? Well, I, I, I'd rather stick to my, my, my area of uh, competence, which is climate change and investment and, and not uh, venture into Xinjiang issues. But I don't think we should talk about a setback, you know. In, okay. in, in diplomacy, one okay. should disentangle between the short term and the long term. On the long term, this negotiation, this treaty, uh, has been a seven years uh, negotiation. During the seven years, the Chinese economy has considerably changed, modernized. It has challenges ahead. And the same for the European economy. So the two economies have an interest in moving further. Uh, and we, 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 one doesn't offset seven years of negotiation for uh, whichever tensions. Uh, those tensions also correspond to elements that are accounted for in the current agreement. Those notions of so-called forced labor are already considered and envisaged in, in the agreement. So basically, the, uh, the, leaders, uh, the leaders agree. And what is important in this meeting we had yesterday is that Germany is the country that was instrumental in having this agreement at the end of last year, but France is the country which will be chairing the presidency of the EU at the time, at the foreseeable time of ratification of uh, the treaty. So this gives a sense of continuity. And last point, uh, there, are, say, there are talks about uh, Angela Merkel having a last visit to China in September in hand with uh, Emmanuel Macron to show this sense of, of, of continuity. So I think we have to look long term on those, especially on those issues which mm -hmm. are uh, global public goods. Uh, the, the Paris Treaty, the Paris Agreement cannot be fulfilled, fulfilled, fulfilled in just a few years. We have to look, uh, we have to look long term, and mm -hmm. the series of meetings show uh, a continuity that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, so